We are ready to start routing out this binding slot. I have an attachment on the uh, little Dremel tool here. This came from Stumac. Uh, I'm getting ready to roll, getting ready to roll this thing right along this edge and cut this binding slot. I've taken a lot of time and and worked on some scrap pieces of wood to make sure that it's going to cut the right size binding slot for the binding I have here. I thought I had the camera turned on, but obviously I didn't. I'm sorry about that, but anyway I am finishing up cutting the binding slots for this mandolin. Kind of a dusty job, but uh, that does a pretty good job of cutting a good slot around there to make the binding fit. As you can see, there's still quite a, a band of filler around here. Like I said, they really chipped it out badly, um, so there's almost no way to make that work without really, you know, once I get the binding on here, I'll just do a lot of sanding and then we'll just do some airbrushing and try to clean it up. It, you're going to be able to tell it to some degree, but uh, you know I'm not a car body shop, so it's it's not going to be perfect. But we'll do the best we can with it. Now all these little detaily areas have to be cut out by hand, and that's a lot of binding cutting all by hand. Um, literally, it just what I'll do is I, I say by hand. I'll use the Dremel tool and freehand cut it with a freehand cutter. And uh, you know it's it's a touchy job, and you got to be very careful because it'll grab and jerk on you, and so it's a tough deal. But I'll show you how I do it. I have this little cutter in the Dremel tool, and uh, anyway, I am just going to do freehand and get it as close as I can freehand. Uh, I, I rest my arm down here on the table like this, and then I just pull it towards me, and I the the depth of this cutter is just about the depth of the binding and I, so I just and actually it's a hair the binding is actually a hair deeper than this cutter so I just kind of use the depth of the cutter as my gauge uh, to go around this and it's just tedious as it can be and sure enough it's uh, it you know you could really make a big mistake with this thing so you just got to take your time. This is not easy at all. The tool's getting hot now. It's hard to hold the Dremel tool, it's so hot.
in this detailed area here, I go back to the X-Acto knife and little tiny chisels that I've made to cut the slot in here. I've done my best on this thing. I've got a, I've got it routed out. I did a lot of work. Or I did some work off camera. I've got it all cleaned up, and uh, it looks pretty good. Um, I may have to adjust it a little bit more when I actually start putting the binding on it, but it looks like it'll work right now. So we're ready to start heating up the binding and putting it in place. I've spent more time cleaning up the edge here off camera and really getting the slots right. I've got the slots cut all the way back under the neck so I can slide the plastic in under the neck. Um, I bent the pre-bent the plastic with this heat gun. Um, basically, I just heated it till it gets a little soft and I bend it by hand. This I found this is the easiest way for me to do it. Um, so I've already got this pre-bent. I'm about ready to stick it in here. And, uh, and get started putting it all together. It's a little bit tight to get this piece in. I also didn't have uh, any extra binding. I had some binding that I had glued up with an extra band across the bottom, but this little stripe across the bottom, I'm, I'm cutting that off. I had to turn it over the other direction and I'm putting that at the top and then I'm going to plane that off. So there, so it'll just be plain binding. Uh, it'll be black, white, or I guess you'd call it ivory, uh, black, white, uh, which should match pretty close to what's on the bottom down there and uh, on the back of the mandolin. Whenever the two pieces of plastic meet, it's a good idea to put extra glue between the two pieces of plastic. That softens them up and uh, you can squeeze them together a little better and they look like they grew together that way. At least that's what I'm hoping here. I stand before you Without one hope or plea My sin spread out before your face As you look down on me I have no merit on my own No ransom could there be My only hope is that your blood In love has covered me took upon your back a wooden cross and started on your way to Calvary. Oh, great the pain, you never changed your mind. It took your blood to set me free. It's been more than 24 hours and the binding has been drying all that time. Uh, I like to let it set at least 24 hours because it just makes it harder. You can start on it sooner than that, but the binding, that glue softens the plastic and if you let it wait longer, you can feel a total difference in the way it carves. The, the binding gets much harder. So um, anyway, what I'm doing is I'm just carving off that extra layer of striping that went through sideways. There's, if you can see there, there's edge binding on there on the top. I turned it over so that I could carve that off back down to the standard binding. Um, that way it'll match what's on the other, other side of the uh, mandolin, on the back of the mandolin. Anyway, so I'm just carving that off. It takes a little bit of time and uh, 
you have to do this carving like this or this scra scraping uh, is probably what you normally do but you uh, you have to kind of do that anyway to make the sides equal out and uh, it's a little bit too much to just use a plain old scraper on although I could do it with that so I'm just using the plane and trying to be very careful I've used the plane technique many times before so it's not a problem this is a little harder to carve than the normal edge binding would be this this uh, by this being flat on there it peels up like that and it catches on the blade it's really a little harder to carve but nothing I can't get through you have to carve it in certain directions otherwise you get tear out so it was tearing out going that way so I had to turn around and go this way for some reason which really doesn't make a total lot of sense on this particular location but that's just the way it is the grain in this wood runs pretty funny Well, that's got the bulk of it off of there. Um, now I'm going to get down uh, to scrapers and the detailing. This is kind of like detailing a car. You, there's little tiny imperfections everywhere and you have to fill them and scrape them and smooth them and it's just a lot of tedious work. It, it really takes much longer than you would ever expect. You'd think, well, you're pretty much done at this point, but you're not. This is, again, this is where the work starts on this, on this particular job. This new type of, I guess it's PVC binding, I don't like it really at all. The old, uh, acetone binding while it's crazy flammable and which is why I'm sure they quit using it um, it's much more expensive now you can still get it but it's really really crazy expensive and uh, but anyway it that acetone stuff scrapes better uh, carves better sands better bends better everything about it's better but uh, this had the, the PVC binding on the back, so that's what I'm using to match it up with. John is a poor, hard-working man. His life was hard, but he does the best he can. He prays to God just to thank him for his bread and a roof over his head. Brother John lost his wife when the fever came around. The gentle girl, oh, he laid her in the ground. She was his life, and her dying hit him hard, till he heard the voice of God, Brother John, trouble on earth is ending, all your sorrows soon will be gone, you're a good man, 
you did all you could and they're calling you home now, Brother John. working out relatively smooth to the surfaces and uh, when I say relatively I don't mean it's perfect because uh, right now I've got a lot of filling to do with uh, just plain old filler because of all the chipping and cracking and, and even around the top where you put the binding on there's little fine very fine little cracks that you have to fill I'm going to uh, take some sandpaper and uh, I'm not going to worry about scuffing up these sides because we're going to have to refinish the sides in addition to make this work look good. about got this thing detailed out there's a little bit of work around the scroll here yet maybe a little bit around the neck on that side uh, but uh, got to looking at it here and I thought well I might as well go ahead and jerk these frets out I hadn't really paid much attention to the fretboard but obviously it's uh, rosewood and uh, the bridge we're putting on is ebony so I figure I might as well go ahead and pull this out cut it down and uh, dye the whole thing black to match the uh, bridge that we're putting on. My soul would say that to live in this world in a house of gold and deny my God and do my soul and deny my God. So, as you can see, we were able to cut that one down to just where the frets disappeared, and we still have plenty of binding around the edges, so we're good. I'm also going to do a fret dressing and leveling, and uh, you know, clean up the fretboard and everything before I dye it. I figure, you know, since we're going to this much trouble, we may as well make. pretty flat now so I think we'll call that good and just recrown them now well I didn't think about turning the camera on that was really stupid of me 
because uh, my wife was in here helping me and so I was trying to uh, you know because I'm colorblind I like to have her take a look at it and see if we're on the right track um, you know I, I'm looking in the viewfinder of the camera and it just doesn't look the same uh, the screen of the camera doesn't look the same as what I'm seeing here so I don't know what it's gonna look like on film but uh, color wise I always seem like there's a real problem getting it back and forth between the camera and uh, what I'm doing here on the bench now keep in mind I'm colorblind but I still see differences and I definitely see a difference between what I see on the screen and what I see here so anyway bottom line is it's uh, according to my wife she thinks it looks real good she likes it the way it looks she likes the look of it better than what's on the back so I don't know that's if she likes it I guess I'm happy so that's the way it looks um, what I've done was just use rags and uh, of course I had gloves on and I'm just using leather dyes Phoebing leather dyes I've used yellow uh, in the center here and then I went with a light brown over that and and a black around the outer edges and then a real dark brown around the outer edges and just kind of blended it as best I can it doesn't blend perfectly but it blends pretty good and then I just took denatured alcohol and blended it some more now I've got to get in and all the little tight areas and touch up places in here you know with brushes and around these F holes and stuff and the edges aren't really done very well yet at all um, just started darkening them up and the airbrushing will blend a lot more of this and uh, you know I got a ways to go before I'm ready to do the airbrushing I apologize for not turning the camera on it's just one of those things I got busy and forgot I'm going to use dark brown to paint the insides of the F holes um, dark brown dye because I if I use black it uh, might get up on the lighter areas and it would be really hard to blend out the, the dark brown will be easier to blend it out and it's kind of halfway between the the black and the lighter colors anyway so yeah I think it'll look fine on the inside edges it's really hard this stuff runs everywhere so it's really hard to do it without making a mess I guess in hindsight I probably should have painted them first it would probably make more sense but I've never done it that way but that's probably the way I should do it from now on and if I think of it next time I will in dreams of yesterday I wonder back to my little cat I strolled beside an old rock garden I saw familiar scenes once more I heard the organ softly It's very difficult to get down in these areas so that you don't see a bunch of white junk down in here I heard my mother sweetly singing Try and roll the paintbrush around until you finally extinguish all the white. She sang about the rock. Well, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> now I've got to go to the sides and work on these sides. I've already just put black around where I had the filler, but uh, I don't know. It's just not just not ideal conditions. She opened up a faded Bible where the family records used to be. I knew it was the same sweet mother who years ago had cradled me. You can't worry about getting a stain on the binding too much because you have to go back and scrape all the binding anyway it's just the way it is it's just part of this process it's not easy to do it this is one of the more time-consuming parts of the project really 
it's not too bad once you finally get to the lacquer part, but that's fairly fast. something to these edges and I'm not really sure what as far as trying to blend them better it's gonna be a little bit of a project put the glove back on and get some alcohol and where I've got a lot of black on here as you can see I'm just gonna take an come through and just kind of swipe it around here and try to blend some of that off. It's, it ain't going to be perfect, but uh, the sides may end up being mostly black because it's just the way it is. If the sides had been taken off with a little, I mean, if the top had been taken off with a little bit more care where there wouldn't have been so much chipping, we wouldn't have had to do very much to the sides, but the sides were so chipped, it's really hard to explain how bad they were. Pretty bad. Quarter inch chipping, I'd say, in lots of places. Yeah, it's not great by any stretch, but I'm going to tape off the back and then just do some airbrush techniques on the sides and stuff. And I think I can cover it up where it won't look too bad. But the sides are going to be very dark. There's no question about that. The sides are not going to be quite as sunbursted as they are now. They might have a little bit of sunburst to them when I'm done, but not much. Okay, I think that's about as good as I can do for the moment until I try the airbrushing and then that may give me another idea. We're out here in the sun uh, outside the shop and uh, I don't have a spray booth so I'm just using some airbrush techniques to darken the outer edges. I've got a mixture of lacquer, lacquer thinner, and uh, dark brown dye, and a little black dye. I can't see the viewfinder, the sun's too bright out here, so I can't tell if I'm in there or not. Think of some good deed that I had done that would give to me the right to attention to God's son. Could it have been because I've tried in every Now I'm going to take a single edge razor blade and go all the way around this thing, all the binding, and clean off all the bindings. Could it have been because my heart? Was often touched with pain. Could it have been because I've often witnessed in his name? Or could it be that in the past... I'm not going to show this whole process, but I just wanted to show you what, how it's done. You basically take your fingers and use them as the depth control going in like that, your fingernail and stuff. And uh, just go around it and just... He chose very to walk up Calvary Hill and die for all mankind. Those 
ugly scars he bore for me while hanging on Well, that's all there is to it. You just do that all the way around and on all the edges. It just takes a while. Got her all ready to be sprayed with lacquer. We've done all the detail around on the binding and everything. Um, it's looking pretty darn good. Um, couldn't be much happier with it. It's, uh, you know, it's still going to take a little bit of work to make these edges look real good. But uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's in real good shape. So uh, we'll step outside and start spraying some lacquer. Got the first coat of lacquer on there. Went on pretty good. We'll just have to wait and see how well it goes. The uh, mandolin has been sitting for a while and uh, the I put, I don't know, probably eight or nine coats of lacquer over the top and now I'm going to give it a, a light wet sanding to level it all out a little bit. I'm using 600 grit right now and uh, this is not going to be a real heavy sanding. I just mostly want to knock away any dust particles and things like that, just little rough surface things. Level it out as much as I can and then we're going to put the final couple of coats on it. And he did it all for me, all for me. I used to have uh, real problems with the finish gumming up on the sandpaper. The uh, When you would do it like this and sand it off, it would just ball up on here. Well, uh, one of the body shop guys told me to put soap in my water and that would, wouldn't happen. Well, since I've started putting soap in the water, that really has improved it a whole lot, I have to admit. I think they said use dishwashing soap. What I was, I didn't have any of that in here in the shop. I've just been using Simple Green, putting a few squirts of Simple Green in there and uh, seems to work great. It's looking pretty good. Um, it's going to take quite a bit more sanding. I'm not going to go ahead and film all the sanding, but I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. Here's what it looks like after the first sanding. It's kind of dulled up. You can still see little pity things in it, but they're really minor now at this point. So I'm going to put several more coats of lacquer on here. Hopefully we can sand it down uh, after that to the final buffing. and. Uh, thinking it's going to look pretty darn good. We're here doing our final sanding on it and uh, it's looking really really nice. I'm really happy with it and I think it's going to be fine. I, right now I've got 600 wet or dry. I'm going to go uh, to 12 to 1500 probably. I think that's the best I've got but uh, something like that. and. Uh, it's really looking good though. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I went ahead and buffed out the sides and the back already to see how well they matched out and they match really nice with the with the back and the sides and everything. It looks, it really doesn't look like it's been uh, changed, you know. It, it looks like the original top in my opinion. Other than you can still see a little bit of the seam, you can still see a little bit of the dentation around here where the top was taken off pretty pretty poorly really it was had so many chips that I filled it and did the best I could with the kind of budget we're working with and it, uh, it looks pretty good though I mean really I don't think that really takes away from it hope it sounds as good as it looks every cross that I bear for my sake One day when he calls me, lay down And all my sorrow will then be forgotten When I train the old cross for a crown And I will train the old cross for a crown Shell 
Well, that looks pretty good for just a hand sanding, and now we'll let it dry for a few hours, uh, let the finish harden back up after all that water on it and everything, and then we'll take it to the buffer and uh, see what we can do with that. I have buffed the instrument out. I finished sanding it with the 1500 sandpaper, and I buffed it out on the buffing wheel, and now I am applying some Renaissance wax. I saw this on a uh, on the Crimson Guitar uh, YouTube channel, the Crimson Guitar YouTube channel, and he was talking about how good the Renaissance wax is. I had never tried it, so I thought I'd give it a shot, and this is the first time I've used it on this instrument here. Uh, I like it so far. Goes on and buffs out nice. That it, they say it leaves a hard protective finish and that's what you want. I do not like any liquid polishes. Uh, if anybody's using any liquid wax po polishes I would recommend that you stop mainly because they eat up your plastic. I can't prove that but I know it's a fact. I, uh, I'm sure there'll be companies out there get mad at me for that but uh, I do not like the liquid polishes, the spray on polishes, or any of that stuff. I've seen them used on uh, guitars and the pick guards curl up and uh, every time it's pretty much a hundred percent. When I ask them what kind of waxes and polishes, how do they take care of their guitar, almost every time it's spray polishes. So, and even these waxes like this, I don't recommend them on the, on the plastic too much. I, kind of keep it like if you had a pick guard I would stay away from the pick guard. That looks pretty nice. I like it so far. I'm gonna wax the back side too. Now keep in mind I did not do I did not do the finish on the back. This is the original finish from Kentucky. They say this Renaissance wax is used in museums to preserve even paintings, everything, sculptures, uh, you know, they claim it works on just pretty much everything, marble, <laughs> leather, wood, they say it's a, a good protective finish that doesn't uh, have any acid in it so it doesn't deteriorate anything down the road, so Seems like pretty good stuff. Got to be honest, it smells pretty much like what I was using already. <laughs> so I don't know, you know, if it's any different or not. I guess if they use it in museums and they put it on priceless artifacts, it ought to be good enough for an instrument. We're going to start setting this thing up now. We'll start with the uh, tailpiece. Get the tailpiece mounted. I got one of these James tail pieces, real nice tail pieces. They have uh, O-rings in here, and uh, it's uh, machined brass instead of uh, it's not a it's not a um, stamped out part. It's been machined, so you can see that it's uh, 
been milled in here. You can see the swirls and everything. So it's a real nice, solid, heavy-duty tailpiece. Heavy tailpieces give your instrument more sustain. This uh, tailpiece, I did some earlier lining up, and it looks like the holes are going to work that from the Kentucky factory, the holes that they used on theirs. So that's a good thing. I'm going to bring it down here between my knees, like this is how I usually do it. Hold it like so. And uh, that looks real good. The customer is actually coming all the way here to pick this up tomorrow. Um, today is Tuesday, May 31st. And uh, the customer is coming all the way from Mississippi to pick this up. And then he's going to go with us down to Mountain View for Thursday night jamming. So uh, he's going to spend the night here and then head down to Mountain View with us. So it sounds looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. By the time you see this, all the fun may be over by then. Because I doubt I'll get this up before we leave. You can see how the rubber O-rings fit in there. I have already somewhat fitted the bridge to the top. I haven't done the final fitting yet, so we're going to need to put a little sandpaper on here and work it out. I got some uh, 220 grit. That ought to be pretty good. It's making real good contact. So, let me just call that good enough right there. Looks pretty darn good when I look at it. Next thing we need to do is put the notches in the saddle. When I take this off, I want to keep the orientation the same. As a matter of fact, I'm going to write it on here. I'm going to write that this is the E over here, and this is the G over here. And that way I don't have to, when I put it back on there, I won't get it backwards to fit the top. What I do is take this is marked treble and bass on this instead of E and G. And uh, I basically just line these notches up with the uh, saddle and kind of center it there. Looks pretty good. Been using this same little marking gauge for probably. 25 years, I guess. My wife thought I was being silly when I couldn't find this after our move, that that's all it turned out to be was that little thing. But I said, man, it works good. I don't want to have to remake that thing. I've been using it for that long. I don't want to lose it. And I just use a three-cornered file to mark it. And I slope it slightly towards the back, towards the tailpiece as I file in this. The last thing I want it to do is to, I want it to touch the front edge of the saddle is the last, you know, so it won't buzz. If it's touching the front edge, it won't buzz. If it's not touching the front edge, it can buzz off of that front edge. So if you slope it towards the tailpiece, you'll have no problem with that. Make sure we got the E side here, put it back on there, and I have a feeling we'll be cutting this bridge down quite a bit because I have a feeling it's going to be high. Okay, I moved the nut in the right place, 
I use the other side of this same little piece of plastic to mark the nut. Just basically center it on the fretboard. I'm going to put the strings on this and just do the setup and get the action and good and all that, but I'm not going to tune it up to pitch till the customer gets here and let him hear it for the first time as I hear it. Before I go much further, I'm going to take the saddle off, cut the saddle down a little bit more. I may have to cut the feet down a little bit more too, the feet on the bridge, because the action is pretty high, I can tell. It's going to be quite high across here so and it's down as low as it'll go so we're gonna to have to do something to change that well we got her all tuned up we got the intonation set and uh, I'll tell you what I'm pretty happy with it. I don't think it. I don't think I could be much happier with it. If you uh, saw the earlier videos, you know that the back was carved, in my opinion, exactly opposite of what I thought it should be. It was real thin in the middle and pretty thick on the outside edges, which is nuts to me. I just don't understand that. But uh, anyway, we got our set up here. We've got this uh, Lloyd Lord top carved on it. We've got a uh, deer antler saddle on it. We put the LS250 strings, which are the uh, silk and steel strings. And that kind of gives it a little bit more mellow, woody sound. And uh, that, that's really good, especially when it's brand new like this, because this it'll take it a year for this finish to cure out and sound good. But uh, I'll tell you what, I'm happy with it. even mellow tone and it's only going to get better for the next year once that finish gets hard it's really going to have a punch and you know what's really cool about this is that the customer is here to pick it up today from Mississippi and Bruce is here so I'd like to have Bruce take a look at this and see what he thinks step right up here Bruce well I've, I've, I have been looking at it and uh, I can I can't say enough about the tone the tone is just spectacular it's just as, as nice as I've ever seen, and Jerry's workmanship is phenomenal. So, uh, I, I just I cannot be happier or more tickled considering what we started with, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, it uh, takes a little while to, to bring them back, but that one there I think turned out real good. I'm I couldn't be happier with it really. It's just, uh, we got a nice heavy tailpiece on there for the sustain. That'll that'll make it sustain even a little bit better, and uh, the deer antler saddle gives it a lot of. Uh, volume and clarity in my opinion and uh, because the top is carved you know to those Lloyd Lore specs it's got a nice woody sound and so when you put that deer antler on there it just brings it out it just makes it really loud so if you're happy I'm even five times more happy well I'm, I'm ten times more happy because <laughs> the sound is is, is is way more than I ever expected we could uh that it would sound like. And well, my theory's uh, always been that the top is at least 80% of the sound, and I think we proved it on this one. I think we did. And you're, you're a great person to work with, easy yeah. to work with. And, well, thank uh, you, Bruce. Just uh, highly recommended. That's all I can say. It's been a, it's been a real joy uh, through this process. Well, thank you very much, Bruce. I'm sure glad you came up here. Bruce is going to jam with us tonight at the Veterans Home in St. James, Missouri. Y'all take care. Thanks for watching.